The reflection of sound is called an echo. For example, if this person speaks, the sound wave will travel to the wall in front, some of the sound wave will be absorbed by the wall and some will be reflected back and the person will be able to hear that as an echo. Empty rooms increase the effect of echoes. Soft furnishings such as carpets and curtains can reduce the effect of echoes. So lots of soft furnishings will absorb more of the sound and less of it will be reflected back. You can use echoes to measure the speed of sound using the following equation. Speed equals distance divided by time. Whereby the units for speed are meters per second, the units for distance are meters and the units for time are seconds. So let's look at an example of how we can use that speed equals distance over time equation to measure the speed of sound. So we've got two people here on the right. If person A claps, that will produce a sound wave that travels towards the building. The building will absorb some of that sound and also will reflect the sound as an echo. If person B times how long it takes to hear the echo, let's say two seconds, we can use that in our equation to work out the speed of sound. We also need to know the distance. So the distance between the person and the building we could measure using a tape measure. So let's say it's 340 metres. But this is important, we must remember that the sound wave travels to the building and back. So the distance the sound travels is twice the distance between the people and the building. So in total, the sound would have traveled 680 meters. So if we put those two numbers into our equation, we've got the distance the sound traveled as 680 meters and the time it took to hear the echo of two seconds. We've got distance divided by time, 680 meters divided by two seconds would give us the speed of sound of 340 meters per second. If you know the speed of the sound wave in a particular medium and you can measure the time it takes to hear an echo returning from an object, you can calculate how far away the object is. And you'd use the equation distance equals speed times time. So let's say we didn't know how far away the people were from the building and that's what we wanted to calculate. So let's still say that the person B heard the echo within two seconds. And we know that the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. So we can use these two values, speed at 340 meters per second and time at two seconds to calculate the distance between the people and the building. So if we put these two numbers into our equation, we've got speed times by time. So 340 meters per second multiplied by two seconds. And that will give us a distance of 680 meters. But we must remember that that's the total the distance the sound has traveled. And the sound has traveled to the building and back again. So we must half this when we are calculating our distance. So it wouldn't be 680 metres away, we would need to halve this and the distance between the people and the building would be 340 metres. This distance equals speed times time equation is one that's often used alongside ultrasound for systems such as navigating. So let's remind ourselves about what ultrasound is and let's introduce some of the uses of echoes and ultrasound. The range of human hearing is between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz and sounds above 20,000 hertz are called ultrasound. So we can produce sound waves that are above our range of human hearing so we can't actually hear them. Many animals can communicate using ultrasound calls. So bats use ultrasound and echoes to navigate and find their food. 
So the abats emit, which means give out, ultrasound calls and listen to the echoes. And this process is called echolocation. So the bat would emit its ultrasound call. That will bounce off objects. It could be trees or buildings that it's navigating. Or when it's hunting, it could be a moth, for example. And it will listen for the returning echo. And their brains process the information about the time it takes for the echo to return in order to calculate how far away the object is. So their brains will essentially be doing that distance equals speed times time equation and then making sure that they halve the distance to work out how far away different objects are. Another use of ultrasound and echoes is when doctors use ultrasound and echoes to form an image of a baby. Ultrasound waves are transmitted through the mother's belly. The sound waves reflect off the baby and the echoes are detected by a receiver. And these echoes are used to form an image of the baby. And as a final use, ships use ultrasound and echoes to navigate. The transmitter emits ultrasound waves and the sound waves reflect off objects, for example the seabed, and a receiver detects the ultrasound echoes. And there will be a computer using that distance equals speed times time equation, remembering to half the distance at the end, and it will calculate the distance that that bottom of the ship is from the seabed or other objects that it encounters. And this echolocation system is called Sonar. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.